It happens on a random Monday, coming back from an event, or late on a Sunday night, right before you get on the plane and you're about to be frisked for the third time. You're driving, you're flying, you're sitting in an airport seat with boys from the team. You're drinking stale coffee trying to stay awake. You're explaining the fat welt on the side of your neck to a confused stranger or a best friend, or running through the sidewalks of LAX trying to catch a plane. You're coming back to the other life, the one without paintball, where no one understands why you do it. You're tired, you're working off a little sleep, the question creeps up and you try to ignore it. Why do I do this? Why the travel? Why the losses and the missed work, the missed school, hours of practice and the complaining girlfriend? Because the lure of living a paintball life is just too potent. And the products of the road, the travel, are memories forever and trips and strange lands with stranger people. At tournaments, it feels like, for once, you actually get to live as loud as you want. It's worth the sacrifices, it's worth all the bullshit. Because if you work hard enough, a Sunday will roll around and you'll be in the huddle, screaming, with your hand in, one among ten, playing for the world title, and suddenly all those cliches you ever heard make sense, and you are defined. You say it to yourself and it means everything. I am a paintball player, and this moment, right here, is my life. So you wanna go out with me? What you get on my knees and bleed? I stole the scrapbook for you. Doesn't matter cause you stole it too. Took your gold and kisses from my lips. You decided it was a stolen bliss. To create to love and fight. To create to love and fight. To create to love and fight. We won't see you at all tonight. So you wanna watch me scream? That's me and what we bleed. Still sound and love it too. Then baby, I hop you. Image. 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 They were the, probably the scariest team in the MPPL to play against. 
Um, you had nine or ten reckless guys that really wanted to just every, you know, run to the 50 and blow everyone's head off out of the break. They play the dynasty ball of today, but they played it back then, so they were a little bit ahead of their game. Um, that totally explains why we picked up a couple of their players. They were just, they know what to do. Their field awareness was great, and their field domination was even better. I mean, we would make game plans for image, because they would come at you in the first minute. If you can live for two minutes against image, you have a great chance of beating them. Tommy retired. He was he was a lot of the heart and soul of the team. Um, there was a lot of still great players on the team, and but I think that Tommy was pretty much the glue that, that held everyone together. And when you have a, a group of superstars and, and guys that don't live around each other that aren't just you know buddies normally. You need that kind of leadership. And when he left, it just wasn't there anymore, and um, everyone kind of went their own ways. Pittsburgh is like the last bastion of Woods Fields. It's, 
it's like trying to take woods fields and concept fields and mix them together and it was awesome while, while it lasted and uh, the last couple of Pittsburghs have been they've been something special in paintball something very special in paintball in Pittsburgh uh, we'd always fight with Kenny and there'd be all the young kids on our team against uh, all the older the fat guys <laughs> rest of the end of the ground but as soon as they get on top of us we're pretty much screwed after that all the tournaments that we go to I just it's all a, kind of a blur of just funny pranks and things that we do. I gave some girl my shirt. Uh, she gave me her, her underwear. It was, just, it was insane. Yes, yeah, so let me tell you about Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh sucks. Rains all the time. That makes it rains all the time? Home of smart parts. There's great yards everywhere. Fields are cool, though. France was like the first time where you ever looked around yourself. I mean, where you actually said, I'm playing paintball, and you looked around, and you saw a couple thousand people watching you play paintball. I mean, a couple thousand people watching you play paintball. To play a game of paintball, and for it to matter, for it to like mean something, for it to be significant, that was special. Being over there, and I mean, I had never even signed autographs or anything, and they were like, oh, you just play for the Iron Man, you know, and get your autograph. Someone asked for my jersey, and I think it was like the first time I ever gave a jersey away. And I was like, you want my jersey? American paintball players get a lot more praise than they do here, so you feel a lot more like an athlete or superstar. Playing it under a crowd, you know, packed on both sides, filled with, ble you know, the bleachers packed on both sides, is, it's, there's no greater feeling than playing in the finals in Toulouse in that stadium. Everybody cheers, it's just, it's great. It's, it's the most um, wonderful feeling that you could ever have playing paintballs for somebody to ask you for your autograph or, you know, possibly sleep with their wife, which is known to happen in the past. <laughs> if France wasn't such a big tournament, it wasn't such a show, if Laurent didn't do such a great job, there's no way in hell you'd get me over there. The people at the airport are mean. The people on the airline are mean. They're French people. They don't like us. You're flying for 14 hours to get there. I mean, the food's not very good. Your traveling's kind of crappy. But you're with your brothers, you know, you're with your friends traveling. That's the best part. You've been with these guys. You sleep with these guys. You eat with these guys. You know, you know, just for a word of the wise, you ever sleep with, with uh, Brian Fowle, 
uh, he spoons you. No matter what race you are, he likes to spoon you, and you probably should not sleep with him. He should sleep alone. On the road, the only cool thing you have is your buddies. Um, you better have a really cool team and better have fun with those guys because that's all that really matters. Honestly, I wouldn't play if I didn't have fun with, with my friends, and, and you can have friends on other teams or whatever, but um, that's about the extent of it. Todd and my cousin Larry dressing up as the cowboy. Well, the cowboy outfit was most amusing. They tended to run up and down the hallways that way. Sometimes they do it in baby suits where Todd dresses up in a baby suit with a pacifier and Larry rolls him up and down in a crib. Marcus running around with this plant as a backpack tied to him and that was probably one of the most embarrassing moments I've ever had in life saying that this kid is actually on the same team that I'm on and I can't believe we picked him back up. No, Nashville was cool. Um, it's Music City, USA.
it's all about strikes now So here's what's striking me That some punk could argue Some more old ABC What people are catching What farmers release Well I'm on a mission To never agree Back in the day when you had the chrono off, it was, you know, you had to win the game, but as soon as you won the game, even though you hung that flag, you always knew that there was a chance that going in, you know, you could go to that chrono and that one beep would be the end of it for you. Yeah, that was actually my hot gun, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, that stuff happens back then when, when, when it comes down to chrono, it doesn't really matter who wins the game, it's all about uh, whether your gun's going to spike or you get a fat ball or, or not. It's Five points this way or that way. There goes your tournament. There goes everything you work for from Wednesday night through Sunday afternoon. That feeling is just, it's unbelievable. You don't know what to expect. You, it, your heart just drops when you hear that beat. 314. Yeah, baby. Frank! Frank! Yeah! Yeah, that's one of five points. Listen, big shout out to me. All right, relax, guys. We've got to get over the chrono. Yeah, you guys got to chrono, too. Then all of a sudden, they got a hot gun. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah, right. you're yeah. You're yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Real fun. Yeah. Good job, senior bro. Woo! It was a relief, but we knew that we deserved it. So it felt good. It felt good. It was good. It was a little gut wrenching moment there, but it was good in the end. It's the last event of the year. The biggest, the best. I think I said this once before, but the World Cup's the Super Bowl of paintball. It's changed, I guess, off the field more so. It's just becoming more of a spectator thing. You have climbing walls. You have 750 trailers. You know, you have compounds where teams go. You have big, huge food courts where you can get anything from pizza for hot dogs. You have massage parlors. You have drunken slushies. You have idiots driving around in golf carts. It's a World Cup. Everybody. Everybody comes to watch Aftershock pound people. That's what the World Cup is. Everyone always jocks Aftershock for being able to perform in the Cup. And that's not a minor accomplishment because when you go to the Cup, everybody's there. And, and it's not just that everybody's there. Everybody's there to win. It's the end of the year. You've had all year to practice. You have no excuses. You've had all year to get your stuff together. There's, there's no reason you should not do well at the Cup if you think you're a good paintball team. <laughs>
that nobody ever can touch. Are you ready for it? I want him to hurt. We're all about winning here. If you don't win, you lost. There's no gray. We lose or we win. I had never seen so much determination in the team to win a, a tournament. It was unbelievable. The team was gelling. They were they were at the top of their game. Oh,
Made a lot of dumb mistakes. And, uh, and, and Image pulled the game out. Brad played very well in that game. Brad Waterman. Um, Turtle played very well. And, and they were able to pull the game out and beat us. Play paintball. Okay? They don't even have a match. Play paintball. Don't run around. Don't just shoot your gun. When you're shooting your gun, find people. Play paintball. When we shoot people, you say where they came from. Not just another one. Another one off the top. Another one off the bottom. Play fucking paintball. One on one. Shot you, Kenny. We got nine skills. We win the next game. We win the tournament. Come on, boys. Nothing down. Nothing down. Go. Regroup. Regroup right here. Well, I remember when I started playing. I saw AfterShock win 16 games in a row win the World Cup in the last game, throw their guns in the air and celebrate. And when I decided that that's what I wanted to do in my paintball career and when I wanted to win the World Cup, that's why I wanted to do it. I wanted to win the, to win the World Cup on the field and throw my gun in the air and tackle my buddies and celebrate right there. Not to win it on points, not to win it by a point squeak by. No, I wanted to win it on the field. When we started getting close to the finals, people started coming up to us and say, hey, you know, if you guys win this thing, you, you have a shot at the title. And we we're like, uh, yeah, whatever. When we got in the finals, they were like, hey, you know, if you beat, if you beat out Aftershock, there's a chance that you could get the cup. We're going into a game where we can make history. We can win the world title, win the World Cup, all in one game. It's never been done before. Winning a World Cup championship and the series title together in one year. It really sucked watching the Ironman win the World Cup and the series in one shot, but as I'm walking off, and I'm looking back and I can see one of my really good friends, Brian, and I actually could swallow somebody doing it before I could. Sunday driving on sunny summer lanes. Lines of trees scream out your name. Shane is a captain. I just can't believe he actually became captain of something. He's just, uh, he's we used to be just so out of control. And then all of a sudden, I don't remember when we became the old guys, but it just kind of happened. And uh, watching him help rebuild that team was, was, was some really good work. And I don't know how the hell he did it. He's just such, 
it's not Shane that did that. It's it just kind of, I don't know how it happened. <laughs> He's just so full of spirit and emotion and heart. I've never met anybody with so much confidence in themselves that they can do anything and win everything. Shane Pestana believed that he could win everything. He took a 19-year-old kid and said that this kid can play on our team. And when I was on that Ironman, when he was on the Ironman, he, I mean, he nurtured me. And that was, if it wasn't for him, I would have quit three years ago. Shane Pestana is the first guy that looked me in the eyes and told me, you know, you can be somebody in this sport. Wow. Shane Pestana is probably one of the, the best paintball players I've ever known, seen, thought about. Um, he's he's probably one of the greatest guys that I know, and um, he's a great captain. There's just so much to him, dude. He um, he helped me out a lot. He was always had the right things to say. He always had the the right speeches to stay in the huddle, and. Uh, I can't, I can't even fathom <laughs> Shane, all those guys, man. Marty and Brian, and they're just such a, they're such like a big impact in my life. <laughs> to actually be able to play on a team with those guys, <laughs> real cool. We were just on fire, man. Honestly, I think there could have been 20 or 30 dudes at the other end of the field, not taking anything away from Shock, Image, or Bobby, but we were just playing on fire. I mean, we were playing above our ability. We were playing, um, everybody was just, I mean, you, we couldn't miss, you know? You shoot left, you hit the guy on the right-hand side, you know? You, the guns were perfect, the paint was perfect, the conditions were perfect. Everybody was feeling so good about the next guy. Everyone had confidence in each other. I mean, we were just rolling, man. And, and it had nothing to do with shock, I don't think, or Bobby or Image, it was us. We were on top of the world and we were playing like it. And it was a special time, because you know, I don't know that that's ever gonna happen again. We won that tournament really convincingly. I, I hadn't, I haven't seen a team play that strong and win a tournament that important, that convincingly, ever in my life. And, it, and, it, and it, it's something that no one can ever take away from us. And thinking back, that that's kind of the way that the old Ironmen were, and that it brings back a lot of memories of how we used to play and how we dominated back several years ago. And it, and it's, and it really kind of makes me believe truly in my heart that the Ironman mentality, the Ironman spirit, is still alive today, and that it's and that's what makes that team so strong. It goes all the way back to the Ironman of old. Like I said, the most dominating team in the world: Brian Benini, Daryl Trent, you know, Clayton, Kyle. People you guys probably never heard of. Those guys, uh, Jamie, <laughs> phenomenal. You guys, you can't co you can't compare anybody to anything unless you compare first to the old Ironman of old, because those guys are the standard for paintball. They started it all. You and me up on the wall Fresh and clean as a spring breeze Way up on the river where The sun shined on the water Had no care Wouldn't it be good to be that young again? And I found myself way back home In the depths of your Staying on the top is the hardest thing. Everybody's trying to knock you off the top. After you lost a couple games, it bothered people on the team. It was like taking an ice pick and stabbing it in. And that was, I think, a little bit of the problems that started because we weren't doing as good 
as we used to. I give a lot of reasoning why the team split and wanted new. I was happy with first, second, or third because I was a realistic person. Uh, I felt that the team, a few players on the team, wanted to strive for first and only win first. I think they didn't think I was striving hard enough and pushing hard enough. When the team asked me to retire, I just decided I'm going to build another team and practice harder and become better. He kind of started from scratch and with, went through the Ironman too, and he's pretty much had the same core guys, Ron Nelson, Kevin Jones, throughout the whole time. And um, he's got new, new guys like Tyler, um, he's got LJ, he's got great guys on the team. And I think they're, they're definitely one of the best teams in paintball. And uh, it's, a, uh, it's just any day now they're going to win their, their first Big Ten Man Pro. I knew one thing for sure, that when Bob and the team split, that Bob would win a tournament again. I knew for sure that, you know, I know Bob, I know him well as a person. He's a very dedicated and determined individual. One of the most dedicated and determined individuals I've ever met in my life. He could take a player that has never played paintball before and turn him into a machine. Um, the guy just has a knack for teamwork coming together. Like I said, he is part of the Ironman of old. The teamwork that this guy takes care of um, is textbook one, two, three, A, B, C. There's no skipping the B, no skipping the two. It's one, two, three, four. I win the game, I win the tournament. The Bob Long Ironmen are a great team, and uh, they're that team because of Bob. And uh, I hope they understand that. I hope everyone else understands that. That team is Bob Long.
we won. Can you believe it? It's unbelievable. To see the look on their faces was incredible. I mean, when GZ wins a tournament, everybody knows that GZ won the tournament. You know, they have like this expression of just immense glee. I don't even know what it is. It's just like every single one of their eyes is just shining more brightly than anybody else at the tournament. Those guys have heart, a lot of heart, and uh, it's evident. You can, you can feel it. And heart wins tournaments, and, and that's what Ground Zero is about. Have you guys ever heard of paintball before? Paintball? Yes, paintball. No. Uh, Dip the balls in paint and throw it at each other? Not quite. <laughs> no, you have like a gun powered by some air and it shoots a little... Oh, yeah, oh. yeah. It's like a war. Uh, no, it's, no, not, it's like not a war. Paint is kind of like gelatinous plastic. Or, or yes. it's, it's long strand. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Not really long strand. I mean, is this a competitive deal? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we have big competitions and tournaments and stuff. Yeah, we went to France last year. Did you? I'm not afraid to watch it go, but it's sobering. I'm left to bend the world off on my own. The points were really tight. Aftershock was definitely a, a neck up. I think they only had to shoot maybe six, seven, eight bodies, and they were going to pretty much wrap up the tournament. Dynasty could win. It didn't really matter at that point. Brad was just running back as fast as he could with the flag, and they called game over. I was sitting there watching Shock, you know, fall all over each other and roll around on the ground after their win. And, uh, and I was touched because we had done the same thing the year before. You know, I was obviously sad that I wasn't there doing it, but, you know, those guys are my friends, and it made me feel good to see that happen. Um, I thought we didn't win the tournament and I sat on the field for at least 30 minutes afterwards just thinking you know how close we came 
to winning an event. I really wanted to win an event that year in our first year. We, we worked so hard, and I thought we had done it. We tried our hardest that last game, and um, I guess we were just gearing down and stuff, and Chuck, uh, Chuck was having the whole dispute with Rennick and uh, Cookston and Rosie. And uh, I mean, the way it worked out was they ended up awarding us, uh, you know, the the win. To have somebody change a ruling off the field after the game uh, is ludicrous. After the game, they pretty much told AfterShock they had won. They were celebrating for 20 minutes, and you know, they were so happy. And it was like walking up to a kid that just got a new toy that he's wanted forever, taking that toy away from him and giving it to somebody else. The look of shock on their faces and the horror that they faced was. Something I hope I never have to face ever, but um, I think it was a real political decision, and I think that if, if it was just Team X playing Team Y, no sponsors, no alliances to the league, that just two teams going at it, I think that game would have stood with Aftershock winning. But unfortunately, we live in a political world, and what's right isn't always what's happening, and you know this, this league isn't perfect. It, it tries its hardest. Most of the time, it gets things right, but every once in a while, things are going to fall apart. The wheels are going to fall off the truck, and I think uh, after Shock was sort of a victim of that. Just too bad that it came down to all the controversy because uh, Shock was on the verge of doing something real special. Kind of hard, you know, winning your first pro tournament like that, especially you know hurting, hurting after Shock like I guess we did. But um, I really don't think that should be on on us. You know, a lot of people say there should have been a lot more, a lot more penalties pulled that game. There was a lot of controversy, and um, just the way it was meant to be. It kind of jaded, I think, uh, Dynasty's win. Dynasty's an outstanding team. You don't mess with those kids. Those kids are up and coming. They run circles around me now. Um, I have mad respect for all of them. Uh, those kids, if they're, they are the future of paintball, and any team that would have any role models whatsoever, um, I would probably have to say you have to look at Dynasty and really model yourself after the way they play and their discipline, because those guys, those guys know what's up for sure. Raw talent. Hungry, raw, young talent that just is out there that wants to play paintball seven days a week, 365 days a year if they could. Um, they're hungry. They are young and they want it. They want it more than anybody else right now. I remember days spent in a life in which nothing could shrink the time between tournaments. I remember kids becoming men on the side streets of America, men becoming boys in parking lots and grass fields. I remember wanting to look closer, wanting to see our story, because it is a story. It's more than 15 minutes running off the clock. It's more than fields filled with inflatable bunkers and colorful jerseys and 200 team tournaments. The one thing I do know is that what we do changes every year and it will continue to change. Nobody's sure what paintball is going to settle into and that's alright because it's the ability 